Hi, and welcome to the art of phrasing. In these videos for strings, I will use examples from orchestra passages that would feature specific technical challenges that most, if not all, string players would face. And I specifically picked passages from the standard orchestra repertory that feature very often in orchestra auditions. So hopefully these might come in extra handy if you decide to one day uh, audition for a youth orchestra or even a professional orchestra. Now, as we know, musical phrasing is basically shaping a series of notes in such a way that the individual notes form larger phrases. And we shape these notes by mainly uh, manipulating sound, articulations, dynamics, and tempo. Now, violinists, you encounter a passage. Let's say the opening of the last movement of Mozart's 39th symphony. Right away, we see it's allegro. There's a lot of semiquavers, and many of them have dots. So we know that probably means it's some sort of off-the-string passage. And this is the point of this video. How do you phrase when dealing with off-the-string bow technique? which is really difficult and something that string players, especially violinists, have to deal with a lot, especially in fast movements like the scherzo movements of Beethoven's Third and his Ninth Symphonies and Mendelssohn's Midsummer Night's Dream Scherzo and Overture. But before we get into the technical details, let's look at the music. How do you phrase all of these black notes? Just looking at the music, it looks like all of the phrases kind of morph into each other until the end of the excerpt. And that's a really long stretch, 41 bars. Also, Mozart doesn't really give us any words or dynamics. So it's all in the music. It's the way it rises and falls in the rhythms. Um, here we see very quickly, there is a classic two bars plus two bars plus four bars period. There's a theme, a response, and then it elaborates. Now, looking at, into these eight bars, although they are three mini phrases, but you've got to connect it as one larger unit. say what not to do. Don't rush the long notes and don't make swells. That's not so good, right? You can hear that. Um, and also, what another reason why that's not so good is because the second violins have 16th notes during this whole time. So I'll talk about some very general rules for phrasing. First, always take advantage of the articulations to phrase. I'll talk more about articulations in the bass video, but here we have all these small slurs and I'd lean into the beginnings of the slurs and I'll slightly clip the ends of them. And secondly, I'll phrase away from the endings of all the little phrases. And third, I'll generally follow the contours of the lines and the harmonies. For example, look at bar 20 to 21, and also from bar 28. We have this motif. It looks like it's a little bit like a springboard. You have repeated notes, and then it cascades down from the top. So it's nice to crescendo through the repeated material, lean on the top note, and release as you go down. That's what I mean by following the contours of the lines. An example for following the lines and the harmonies is from bar 28. And we have rising sequences and increased harmonic interest as we modulate. So again, it's good to keep or increase the intensity. Towards 
a new destination, F major. And don't forget to phrase away to end. Remember, always phrase away in music of this period, unless the composer specifically writes otherwise. So that was pretty straightforward, right? But now we get to the question of how. How do you do that? So phrasing has to be done through technique. And for us string pl players, phrasing is almost, not completely, but almost all about bow control. Because those things I mentioned at the beginning, sound, dynamics, articulation, they're mainly the job of the right hand, which controls the bow, which produces the sound. And the better your bow control is, the wider the range of possibilities of sound that you'd have. So here in the Mozart, we're dealing primarily with what sounds like an off-the-string bow stroke. Specifically, it's mostly the soutier stroke, where the bow is actually on the string, but it's going so fast that it sounds off the string. One thing to note is that this is a little bit different from the spiccato stroke that's completely off the string and that you need to control every stroke. So this is, for example, what you'd see in bar 7. So you see right away that we have a variety of strokes here, mostly soutier, but then you've got some spiccato and you've got lots of slurs thrown in. You'd want to be really relaxed with your right wrist so that the bow can jump on its own. The right wrist is the boss here. You're going to be a bit below the middle of the bow and it doesn't take very much bow at all. One nice thing about this beginning in piano and starting with the soutier stroke is that it's actually forgiving. You don't have to worry about making the bow go off the string right away. You can and should start on the string and from the string. And off you go. So it's really helpful to have enough control to be able to change how much on or off the string you play. So. So, because that really helps the phrasing. For instance, in our springboard motif, when you want to phrase towards a note, you go more on the string with a little more bow and more bow contact. And, and see how I also release as I phrase away. And uh, the, another instance in this excerpt is at the end where um, I will use more bow and more bow contact as I get to the note that I'm phrasing two words. So I hope this helps you in your spiccato and soutier journey. Off the string technique is really tricky, but it can be fun too, especially when you phrase. Here's the whole excerpt for your reference and wish me luck! <laughs>